In May 1982, under strict orders from the unscrupulous Margaret Thatcher, the British Armed Forces carried out a secret operation that was one of the most spectacular scenes since World War II. Operation Plum Duff. The goal was clear and concise. Directly attack the Rio Grande Naval Air Base and destroy the powerful Argentine Super Entendard aircraft and the dangerous AM-39 Exocet missiles which posed a threat to the British Army. But not everything went as expected. What were the mistakes made by the British Armed Forces? Was it, as some claim, a suicide operation? Join us in this new episode of Military History and discover the secrets of the incredible and mysterious Operation Plum Duff. Are you ready? Then, prepare to travel back in time. The Malvinas Islands, located south of the Atlantic Ocean, witnessed one of the last wars to take place in South American territory. Today, almost 40 years after the confrontation between the Argentines and the British, there are still many secrets to unravel. To get into context, it was the first days of April 1982 and Argentina was ruled by a civic military dictatorship. Leopoldo Galtieri, a member of the de facto government and unelected Argentine president, gave the order to send troops to the Malvinas Islands with the intention of recovering the territory, which had been usurped in 1833 by Great Britain. The UK, unsurprisingly, did not welcome such actions and did not hesitate to send hundreds of soldiers to keep what they considered to be their property. It was in this context that the Malvinas War began. It is within this panorama of confrontation between the Argentine and British Armed Forces that Operation Plum Duff happened. After the English Army hit and sank the powerful cruiser General Belgrano, Argentina prepared a lethal aerial counterattack and sank the hitherto unbeatable Sheffield. This was astonishing to the UK government. They considered it unacceptable that an army like the Argentine could beat an English ship with technology that was advanced for the time. We must destroy the Exocet missiles eliminate the Super Intendar planes and kill the pilots in the Rio Grande, whatever the cost," proclaimed Margaret Thatcher, British Prime Minister. With these weapons and aircraft, the enemy armed forces had sunk the mighty Royal Navy destroyer, and if the British did not make a quick counterattack, they knew they would run the great risk of losing the war and thus the islands. Now, it's time to review the Argentine weaponry so fearsome for the British government and its armed forces. The AM-39, known as Exocet, is a French anti-ship missile capable of reaching the target by skimming the crest of the waves at an altitude of about 10 meters. It has the fabulous ability to descend up to 3 meters or rise quickly, avoiding any anti-missile system and hitting the target from above. The Superintendar also created in France, is a third-generation naval fighter-bomber aircraft, which is tremendously effective, particularly in combination with the Exocet. This is why, without hesitation, Great Britain decided to urgently send the B Squadron of the Special Air Service, better known as SAS, to South American lands. This battalion was led by the famous and admired Brigadier Peter de la Billière, who was chosen to plan the commando assault along with Captain Andy Legg. Thus, Operation Plum Duff was born. The plan consisted of two C-130 Hercules planes heading from Ascension Island, located in the Atlantic Ocean between the African and American continents, and embarking on a trip to the Rio Grande Air Base, with the sole objective of destroying and eliminating the Super Entendard planes and their missiles. Admiral Sandy Woodward demanded a solution from the British leaders. An attack on Rio Grande is essential for the recovery of the islands. Several members of the SAS doubted that this strategy could work. Many thought it was a suicide operation. But none of these experienced soldiers gave up their duty and they accepted the mission. If you are worried about death, you're in the wrong business. It didn't matter if we could get out, but we had to get in said Jim Norfolk, a member of the SAS. On May 15th, with little planning time, the
the two Hercules planes began their journey to South America, and the risky Operation Plum Duff began. After traveling for more than 10 hours, the English soldiers parachuted with their backpacks and weapons, jumping from more than 370 meters high. There, the Fort Austin liaison ship would wait for them, accompanied by the Sea King ZA-290 helicopter, which was loaded with extra fuel and was of vital importance if it was intended to evade enemy radars by flying low. But as we already mentioned, the operation did not go exactly as Thatcher and her compatriots expected. It was at night, on May 16, 1982, when off the coast of the province of Tierra del Fuego, the Argentine ship ARA Bouchard detected three echoes through its radars. They had discovered a submarine and several British inflatable boats. Members of the SAS, uninformed about this event, set off for their target, hampered by a great fog for much of their journey. But thanks to the fact that the pilot Richard Hutchins and the navigator Alan Bennett wore night goggles, 40 kilometers from the Rio Grande Air Base, they were able to identify that they had been discovered by Argentine radar. A patrol had gotten off the Sea King and was standing alone in Argentina when we saw lights and a strong flash, said Andy Legg, captain of the SAS several years later. This is why the British force decided to abort the mission and continue for several kilometers towards Chile. A group of soldiers landed at the secondary drop-off point on the border with the Transandian country, and the Sea King crew landed in the city of Punta Arenas. There, they had no choice but to sacrifice their weapons and blow up the famous war helicopter with explosives. What followed was a true nightmare for the SAS soldiers. They were adrift in the stormy cold of the South Atlantic coast. They wandered disoriented through the Chilean lands and supplies would run out in a few days. More than a week later, on May 25th, no longer able to tolerate the weariness of the weather, all the members of the SAS surrendered to the Chilean police. Needless to say, they never made it to the Rio Grande base. A Chilean Air Force plane came to the rescue, and with its collaboration, they managed to return to London alive. After 36 years, Legg confessed that one would have to think that men can walk on water to believe that Operation Plum Dove could have had any chance of success, at least based on the intelligence that we had. This was the story of Operation Plum Dove, a secret and dangerous mission doomed to oblivion in the UK. We will probably never be able to find out every detail of a journey about which, in these almost 40 years, only a few brave people have dared to speak about. We have reached the end of this video, and we want to ask you, what do you think Operation Plum Duff needed to be successful? Was it right to start this mission with so little planning? Leave us your opinion below, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and activate notifications to learn much more about the fascinating military history. Thank you for joining us, and until the next video.